You can't have excuses. You can't play the blame game because great people don't make excuses. They make up. You still must grind. I'll never be in the Olympics. I'll never be a professional athlete, but still I grind. I feel that most things I do, but still I grind. I don't want to do half the shit I do, but still I grind. When you're working at your dream, somebody said the heart of the battle, the sweet of the victory. Oh, it's sweet to you. It's good to you. Why? See, when you when it's hard and there's a struggle, see what you become in the process is more important than the dream. No more will I be treated like this. No more will I be overweight. No more will I be in a job that I hate. Just decide, man. What you need to do is to train your mind and focus on the pain you'll get if you don't act. Listen to me, you are in full control of your destiny, of your future, of your dreams. Nobody else is responsible for it. Don't you give up on your life. Don't you give up on those reps. Don't you give up on giving it what it takes to get the most of yourself. Still I grind. And that one day, you see me on a dark alley, run at one o'clock in the morning, no one thing. I was grinding. Why is the truth so important? You have to have the truth to have a starting point. And your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. We all look for toughness. We all want it, but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, you will not find it. The only way you find it is to drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Where you're drowning. When you say, you know what, man? That. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. It's in our head saying, you know what, man? Dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. You're wasting a bunch of percentage here. In this other 80% is suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness. And then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you gotta go through all of this shit. You're not succeeding, you're not achieving. It's because you're afraid to go in that dark place to find yourself. You're setting goals you know you can reach. And when you do that, that fear, that insecurity, that doubt, that's where you grow. You must always set goals that you think you cannot achieve. And in there you get better. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, the amount of mental pain, of how many times you're going to have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. Every day, you must ask yourself, did I do enough? And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that shit we have nowadays, your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, you're going through death, real life shit. You can't Google that shit, man. You're alone 
You're alone, you may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're fucked. You gotta tell your brain where you wanna go and how you wanna go and how you wanna get there. You gotta control it. If not, it's over. It's over. All I knew back then was hard work. You gotta work hard. You gotta work hard. I can't get this paragraph. I can't remember what the fuck's in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read it again. Still not getting it. Read it again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And that's how I started learning. I realized if I keep going back and going back and going back until the shit just becomes, your mind will say, fuck, okay, we're gonna figure it out. It'll find a way. Because he is not going to stop. It's not like, I'm gonna try one more time. No, alarm clock goes off, boop, we're going back. I can't read right, we're going back. I gave myself no way out and my mind realized that. They said, okay. We're gonna adapt and overcome now. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself wherever it is, and you become that. I became hell. And that became my new norm. I gave myself no way out. There was nothing outside these walls of hell. Nothing. I watched this segment on TV about these guys going through Navy SEAL training. And I couldn't even, I, I wasn't a great swimmer, I was afraid of the water, all this crap, man. I saw these guys just quitting. But at the very end, it says 22 guys, this commanding officer's up there and he gives this great speech. So I started visualizing me being the 23rd guy, sitting there with these guys. I said, man, if I could feel that, that would change my life. And what was that feeling you wanted so bad? Respect, accomplishment? No. Victory. I wanted to win. Not like beat somebody else. It wasn't about that. I, I, I just wanted to go the distance. Everything in my life, when something got hard, I quit. I had to work harder than you, so I quit. Like, man, if I could just go that distance, that extra mile, to just go, just, just to finish. I want to finish. I want to feel victory. And victory for me wasn't winning, it was just finishing. So I said, you know what? If I could feel like these guys feel, it would change my life. And literally, I started feeling victory just by putting myself in the battle. I started realizing, man, just by going to war with myself every day, and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles, now we can move from there. But if you look at it as, man, I'm broken and I'm still here, and I'm fighting, and I'm gonna find a way to get through this, because I have no other place to go, it gives you a lot of power. And no one really finds themselves without going through trials, tribulations, suffering, accountability. And accountability is suffering. Being accountable every fucking day for doing right, for yourself, for the people next to you, it's miserable. The more I did this, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized, fuck these Navy SEALs, man. These guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I had no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. And your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. That's where he came from. He came from all these fucked up obstacles, and now he's there. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. Man, let's go, it's time. You got one life to live.
live. It's time to get it done. I don't know who you are, where you're from, but get it done. It's time to listen. It's time to focus. What haven't you been able to accomplish? What has stopped you? What has haunted you? Why are you losing sleep over it? All roads lead back to what you're focusing on and who you're listening to. Energy flows where focus goes. So what are you focused on? If you haven't been able to get it done, today marks the first day of the best days of your life. So where focus goes, energy flows. I'm talking to you. If you're going to get it done, I need you to listen and focus. At all costs, protect your peace. If you're going to get it done, you got to let some things go. Stop waiting to feel like it. Stop waiting until you see it. Stop waiting for somebody to come and save you. Nobody's coming to rescue you. The problem with many of you is that you're focused on your fears. You're focused on the risk more than you are the reward. The prize goes to the hardest worker in the room. The question is, how bad do you want this? The problem with many of you is that you're not tired enough. You're focused on the pain of the process more than you are the glory on the other side. You're listening to the wrong people. You're listening to the wrong voices. It's time to pull that energy from fear. Pull that energy away from doubt. How bad do you want this? If you can hear my voice, I'm just wondering if you are bold enough if you are daring enough, if your faith is outrageous enough to take a chance on yourself, it's time to manifest. It's time to get it done. Fight, fight, fight for your future. It may hurt, but get it done. With tears in your eyes, get it done. If nobody believes in you, get it done. If the person you love most walks out on you, get it done. If your children don't believe in you, get it done. If your spouse don't believe in you, get it done. It's always impossible until it's done. So get it done. Over the course of my life, I've come to realize that in order to get things done, there are some things I've got to get over. And that's the problem with many of you is that you're not over the relationship gone bad. You're not over the job that you lost. You're not over the person that walked out on you, the people and the places where you've experienced trauma and anguish. You're not over it. You're not over the fear. You're not over the anxiety. You don't smile anymore. You don't laugh anymore. You don't love like you used to. And there are some things you're gonna have to get over you have not been able to get it done because you're carrying so much weight from the past. You don't feel like it. But newsflash, stop waiting to feel it. At the end of the day, you can listen to a million motivational speeches, but you are going to have to wake up and make a decision to get it done. The moment you are no longer willing to tolerate where you are, everything changes. Nobody's gonna be able to pull you out of the murky water, out of this muddy, bloody, painful, miserable place that you're in. You're gonna have to make up your mind, enough is enough, I'm getting out of this place. And I got stuff to do. I've got a destiny to fulfill. Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to let go of some things? Are you willing to put the work in? 
Are you ready to be consistent? Are you tired of this version of yourself? Get over the pain. Get over the trauma. Get over the betrayal. Get over who left you. Get over who lied on you. Get over it. If you're going to get it done, you've got to get over it. Release the pain. Release the unforgiveness. Release the fear. If you're going to get it done, you're going to have to eliminate all distractions and put your blinders on. I don't know what your goal is. Let the world reject you. Let the world close doors on you. Let the world tell you no. I'm just wondering, can you dig deep inside yourself? The future goes to the hardest worker in the room. You have everything you need to get started. Stop waiting for the weather to change in your life. Stop waiting for the perfect conditions. Stop waiting for a handout. Stop waiting for everybody to believe in you and cheer for you and affirm you. Life knocked you in the mouth years ago and you haven't hit back yet. You hit back with determination. You hit back with focus. You hit back when you listen. You hit back when you are disciplined. You hit back with resilience. Get in the ring and hit back. It's time to get up and hit back. Stand in a mirror and tell yourself, I've got a destiny to fulfill. It's simple, but it's not easy. But all you have is all you need. It's the start that stops most people. Start now. When you leave this place, I need you to get in beast mode and stay in beast mode. On three, beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. No, come on. One, two, three. Beast mode. Come on. One, two, three. Beast mode. If you wake up at 3.30, some other kid's getting up at 3 and he's got 30, 30 minutes on you today. I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you not only to want to be a beast, I need you to live in beast mode. Because if you live in beast mode, you'll have what other people don't have. Listen to me very closely. Not only will you have what other people don't have, you'll do what other people can't do. So what is it? What is that one thing that you're saying that I am going to get this thing done and I'm gonna make my dreams become a reality? Everyone wants to be a beast until it's time to do a real beast do. Everybody wants to be a beast. Everybody wants to make their dreams become a reality. There's no one sitting in this room who said, I wanna procrastinate. I don't wanna get it done. I don't want to get to the next level. No, every person in this room, not only do you want your dreams to become a reality, you deserve for your dreams to become a reality. This is important. Seasons are always temporary. Say it. Crisis is not a permanent condition. It's just a season. And the key to life is what you have to do is organize yourself to outlast the season, that's all. As long as you're average, you're gonna get what average people get. If you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're gonna do, you're gonna get to the next level. But no one can do it for you but you. It's not over until I win. Life has taught me that you will grow through what you go through. Life has taught me that you will grow through what you go through. Life has taught me for every level, there's another devil. Life has taught me the depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a goal. Everybody wants something in life 
But many of you in this room right now, your beast mode is idle. Your beast mode is not turned on. And when you leave this place, I'm telling you, your life is going to go to a whole other level if you can learn to turn that switch on and keep that switch on. I outlasted the pain. You're saying, I've got dreams, I have goals, there are things that I want to accomplish, I'm not satisfied. Like, I don't sleep well at night. Like, like E.T., I, I dream it, E.T., I want it, E.T. Let me tell you something. If you get to that point, if you get to that point where you do exactly what you said you were going to do, you're going to get to the next level. As an individual, I need you to get your schedule up. I need you to get your life up. I need you to get your words up. I need you to get your heart up. I need you to get your action up. I need you to get to a place that every single thing that you do is phenomenal so that the life you want to live, you can actually live that life. Everybody wants to be number one. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to have to be and do what they feel they've been called to do. The challenge becomes, most of us, when it's time to do what beasts do, we don't do it. I need you to put this down, put this down, put this down. Because what you're going to discover as you're going towards your dream, as you're going towards your goal, they're going to be, they're going to man, so many distractions. There are going to be so many people that, haters, so many people that come up against you. So many obstacles, so many trials, so many tribulations. When people ask me, E.T., like for real, for real, E., I know you can give me 20 things that you've done to help yourself to become successful. But E.T., I just need like one or two. Can you give me one or two? And one of the things I tell people is, I outlasted the pain. I outlasted the pain. I need you to recycle your pain. When I was sleeping in those abandoned buildings, I kept telling myself, one day you'll be a homeowner. Every time I walked into that abandoned building, I told myself that this might be your current circumstances, but this will not be how the story ends. All you have to do, E.T., is to survive today. When they kicked me out of school, I knew that I would not be a high school dropout for the rest of my life. I knew I got to get through this one day. Me and my mom been through a lot. My mom and I have gone months and almost years of not talking to each other, but every single day I kept telling myself, one day I'll have a, a great relationship with my mom again. Yeah, one day. Well, I didn't grow up with my biological father. He wasn't into my, in my life until I was 30 years old. But I told myself, today your father is not in your life, but one day. And so every single day when I wake up homeless, one day, Every single day when I woke up in that abandoned building, one day, one day is going to be E.T.'s day, but that day can't come if I give up today. So every single day when I woke up, I kept telling myself, today might not be the day, but soon it will be my day and I will recycle my pain. Say, so what do you mean, E.T., you recycled your pain? I turned homelessness into a book. I turned my father not being in my life to a book. I turned an estranged relationship with my mom into a book. I turned being homeless into a book. I turned being a high school dropout into a bestseller. And not only do they sell it in America, they sell it across the world. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine you? I outlasted the pain. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Like success is getting what you want. Fulfillment is living what you're made for. Fulfillment and success, they're not even the same universe. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? And I always tell them it's really simple. <laughs> One word, progress. Progress equals happiness. If you keep growing, you're gonna feel alive. And if you keep growing, you're gonna have more to give. It doesn't matter how many statues, Oscars they give you, or Emmys, or how much money you have in the bank. 
We've all seen people had all those things and I get the phone call because they're depressed or somebody commits suicide in that area. It's really an inner game and I think that's what's missing for us today. Everybody's focusing on the outside world and how there's a lot of things in the outside world you'll never be able to control. You can influence, but you can't control it. This, your mind, your emotions, your body, you have 100% control over what you do with these things and that's where the game is won. Win the inner game, then you win the outer game. But a lot of people spent their life trying to win the outer game, they won and they're miserable. Someone can tell your whole life you're a piece of crap, but you can say, screw you, read between the lines and make your life work. Someone can tell your whole life you're beautiful, you're intelligent, you're the smartest person in the world, and you don't believe it. Because self-esteem doesn't come from what people say about you. Self-esteem is earned within yourself. It's esteem for yourself, which only comes by doing things that are incredibly difficult, and then your brain goes, this is who I am. You, you really gotta figure out what you're made for, and nobody knows in the beginning. So you start where you are and you do what's in front of you, you do what's next, then you keep growing until you start to discover, hey, this is my real passion. So identity is the number one thing I work to change with people, to expand it. Expand your own sense of who you really are and what you're capable of. And the mindset has to be destroy any limitation and move forward, move forward, move forward. I think passion is the genesis of genius. If you've got enough passion, you're gonna find answers nobody else does, but most people run out of fuel, meaning they get tired, they get exhausted, they get burnt out, they get, uh, you know, the law of familiarity. They're around something so much, they take it a little bit for granted. And I've managed to see something in myself that I found in every great leader that I've ever respected, and that is, I, I, I value intelligence immensely, but I know really smart people can't fight their way out of a paper bag pragmatically, right? What I see is the one common denominator of people that are successful over a lifetime is the sustained hunger. Hunger is the number one factor. You need to be good at pattern recognition, and that's what gets somebody strong at anything. I mean, you look at, you know, why is Amazon doing so well? You realize one pattern was valued over anything else, convenience. Right? If you look at Tom Brady, a friend of mine, he, he's got pattern recognition like nobody else at 43 years old. He's able to do things no one dreamed could be done. He's got more Super Bowl rings than any team. See, what do they see that none of us see? What's the pattern? Then you gotta learn pattern utilization. It's one thing to see it, it's another thing to use it. And then if you're good after a while, you get to pattern creation. It's like if you learn to play the piano, most people play other people's music. And then there's a point you've learned so much that you're able to create really comes down to anyone can learn anything if it's important enough to you. So it's like my drive is not just for me, that wouldn't be enough because it's easy to meet your own needs, it's not that difficult. But if you can find something that you care about more than yourself, your daughter, your son, your family, your business, your mission, your community, whatever it is, that's really the secret to energy and vitality and strength and really learning. One of the things I want to do with people during this challenge is take things that seem so complex and make them so simple so you do it. Get it really simple, things you can do right now to change your life. You can go to experience it that day, and then you get momentum. Day one, day two, day three, day four, and all of a sudden now what used to be hard to do is easy to do. And I think for anyone, you got to understand anyone can learn anything if you can just break it down to its simple core, and that's what I try to do most. And I'm just not willing to settle for a life without passion and aliveness. That's just like, there's so much to learn, there's so much to grow, there's so much to give, and I'm, I'm wired to grow and give. And I, I, I think anybody gets wired to grow and give is gonna have a really fulfilling life. It doesn't matter what you choose to do, you're gonna be alive. A year ago, people thought we were coming out of, you know, we got vaccines now, and we're coming out of COVID, and it's gonna be all over now, and people are excited. But now, after going through two years of this, there's a lot of people now that no longer have a compelling future. Like, you know, people talking about New Year's resolutions, most people don't even have one. Because it's like, they never followed through anyway, right? But at least they had something to look forward to. They're starting to get into learned helplessness. Learned oh, helplessness is, is when something is so bad over and over again, you start thinking the problem's permanent. No problem is permanent. Or you start thinking the problem's pervasive because I haven't handled my finances, my whole world's over. Or because my relationship's bad, my whole world's over. Your life is bigger than that. My goal right now is to shake that up for people. People need a new perspective, and you can't do it by just sitting and thinking. 
You gotta move your body, you gotta change your energy and your focus. But if I get you into a higher state of being, mentally, emotionally, physically, then all of a sudden you start remembering who you are and you start coming up with answers that you never even thought were possible before. The idea of remembering who you are is something incredibly powerful. There was a uh, Batman cartoon where he gets amnesia and he gets put in like a, a camp basically, a work camp, and he can't get out. And he, he feels stuck and weak and you know afraid. And then something happens, I don't remember what triggers his memory. And he remembers that he's Batman. Just in remembering that he's Batman, he then takes the actions to fight his way out. And look, I know it's a cartoon, but that has always resonated with me. And whenever I'm feeling anxious about something, I always tell myself, remember who you are. But you're really talking about the most important concept in lasting change, identity. We all define ourselves in certain ways. So you start where you are and you do what's in front of you, you do what's next, and you keep growing until you start to discover, hey, this is my real passion. And it can change. People go for five, six, seven years, and then they usually question their business, their career, their, their body, their relationships. And then one of two things happens. They change direction and feel renewed, or they go, no, I got a great deal here. What the hell's wrong with me? And they recommit and they get stronger. But that's life. And if you don't grow, I don't give a damn how much you got going for you, you're gonna be miserable. I think as early on I realized that, you know, one of the things you have to understand about life is everything changes and everything ends. And that kind of sounds heavy on the front end, but it's a truth. If everything changes and everything ends, number one, it should make you appreciate what you have right now. And then my view is what's next is always better. If I make it so, it's my job to make it so. And I think that's how we have to navigate. But most of us, most of us have been conditioned not to, to take a risk. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? And I always tell them it's really simple. One word, progress. If you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made, that you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. I've been a Navy SEAL for 36 years. Every morning in SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam veterans, would show up in my barracks room, and the first thing they'd do was inspect my bed. If you did it right, the corners would be square, the covers would be pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. It seemed a little ridiculous at the time, particularly in light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough, battle-hardened seals. But the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. It matters not whether you ever served a day in uniform. It matters not your gender, your ethnic or religious background, your orientation, or your social status. Our struggles in this world are similar, and the lessons to overcome those struggles and to move forward, changing ourselves and changing the world around us will apply equally to all. If you think it's hard to change the lives of 10 people, change their lives forever, you're wrong. I saw it happen every day in Iraq and Afghanistan. But changing the world can happen anywhere and anyone can do it. So what starts here can indeed change the world. You will likely fail often. It will be painful. It will be discouraging. At times it will test you to your very core. At that darkest moment of the mission is a time when you need to be calm when you must be calm, when you must be composed, 
when all your tactical skills, your physical power, and your inner strength must be brought to bear. If you want to change the world, you must be your very best in the darkest moments. If I have learned anything in my time traveling the world, it is the power of hope. The power of one person, a Washington, a Lincoln, King, Mandela, and even a young girl from Pakistan, Malala. One person can change the world by giving people hope. Start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. Finally, in SEAL training, there's a bell. A brass bell that hangs in the center of the compound for all the students to see. All you have to do to quit is ring the bell. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to wake up at five o'clock. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to be in the freezing cold swims. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to do the runs, the obstacle course, the PT, and you no longer have to endure the hardships of training. All you have to do is ring the bell to get out. If you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. You know, I thought if you were a good person and you do right by people, that people will take your kindness and, and give you kindness back. But what I realized is sometimes in this world, the kinder you are, the more they try to play you like a fool. I was delusional. I'm nice to you, you're nice to me. Don't always work like that. Sometimes it's nice to me and I take advantage of you. So some of y'all, you delusional. I just need you to do me a favor. When you are delusional, you can never get the outcomes you want because you, the, your, the premise in which you're operating from is a lie. So you gotta work from truth. And some of us don't wanna deal with truth because it's so difficult. E.T., you dropped out of school. E.T., you grew up in a certain community. In order for you to be able to do what you need to do like a Tony Robbins, there's some things that you don't have in your arson that if you can just admit you don't have it in your arson, then you can go get it. But until you admit that you don't have it, you'll never be able to do it. So I need you to make a huge favor. I just need you to be real. And the reason why a lot of y'all don't wanna be real because some of you would rather be in a lie and at least have a lie than not have anything at all. You already know that job, you ain't about to, your boss ain't about to cash you out. You're just scared to quit and start your own business because you don't know if you're going to do well or not. You know you shouldn't. Come on, be honest. You know you still shouldn't be at that job right now. Let me see your hand. Let's just be real. Let me see the hand. You know you shouldn't still. Raise it high. Don't play with me. Raise it high. You still shouldn't be at that job, but you're delusional that one day is gonna be your day, that one day you're gonna merge your job and your, your calling together. It's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to just leave. He gave me permission to say I am brilliant. I, yeah, I might be different, but I am brilliant. Yep, I might be loud, but I am special. He gave me permission. And so the first thing I want you to do today is I want you to keep saying to yourself, I am, I am, I am, I am. And for those of you who hadn't quite started yet, I am. And for those of you who gotten started, I am. Why? Because I can't believe that I started with a GED and that GED turned into a four-year degree. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I am great. Listen to me, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am phenomenal, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am going to do great things, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am. I was created to be great. 
I was created to do great things. I was created to have great things and I will no longer ask others for their permission. That Eric Thomas that grew up in Detroit and had like that Detroit mentality, while I love it, it doesn't transfer to every community. I had to, let, let the dream destroy you. Let it strip you. Let it remake and mold you. Don't be afraid. Some of you are afraid. Listen to me, wherever you from, if that's where you from, if you leave, you can always come back, I promise you. I promise you when you come back, you can get right back in the conversation. Ain't nothing gonna change. I promise you, whatever world you're from, if you go to other worlds, you can always go back to that world. The, the version of you that you are right now is a blessing, but it won't take you to the next level. What got you here won't take you there. So let the dream destroy you, tear you down, redefine you, build you back up, make you stronger. The first version of Eric Thomas, the high school dropout, that guy would have never been able to stand here and help you. I had to destroy that Eric Thomas. No matter who you are, if you're average or if you're good, when you get around greatness and you stay around greatness, you start listening to great podcasts and reading great books and you start hanging around great people and you start becoming a part of great masterminds. God, you, you just evolve. And I don't know what happened, but every year I went from a high school dropout and homeless so I started to becoming every single day more of who I am and I can't believe it. My next goal is to win the Nobel Prize. Why? I had to come up with something. I am giving you permission to be great. I'm giving you permission to be everything you were called to be, to do everything that you're capable of doing, to have everything you're supposed to have. Listen to me, you have to be careful when you hang around average people. All they're going to do is tell you what they can't do, and that's okay that they can't do it, but that has absolutely nothing to do with us. We can go from being homeless and high school dropouts to having PhDs, writing books, and becoming the voice of a generation. We can do whatever we believe we can do, and we don't need anybody's permission to do it but ours. You are brilliant. You are special. Yes, you're different, and yes, you're not doing it the traditional route, but greatness is upon you. You gotta keep going, you gotta keep going, you gotta keep going. In the 12 years to get the four-year degree turned into a master's degree. And the master's degree turned into a PhD. Guys, I can't believe it. I went from being a high school dropout, from being homeless, living in abandoned buildings, to eating out of trash cans, to Dr. Eric Thomas, to writing six books. Guys, are you hearing what I'm saying today? Stop playing small and start playing big because I am. All right, all right, all right, let's stop. On three, one, two, three. I am. One, two, three. One, two, three. I am. I am. I am. Listen to me, I was literally homeless. I was coming to church, not really taking showers. I wasn't brushing my teeth. And this guy looked at me and said, you need to get your GED. You need to leave Detroit. I'm gonna send you to college because greatness is upon you. I was 16, 17 years old. I had never spoken a day in my life and this guy saw it. Like he saw something in me that I didn't see and he gave me permission to be where other people said I couldn't be. He gave me permission to believe I was great. He gave me permission to think I could change the world. He gave me permission to start something that had never started in my family before. He gave me permission to say, I am, I am, I am. Listen to me very closely. When you graduate and you get a job, if you want to get paid, you never say no. You never say it can't get done. Don't you ever say out your mouth it can't get done. Even if you feel in your heart it can't get done, you don't say it out loud. You let the broke folks say that. You let the folks they firing first say that. You always say it can get done. Even if you don't think it can get done, just say it and try to make up something. I'm being real. I'm being real. I don't, I don't deal with people who say, or they get paid real low in my company. They like maintenance when you say, I don't know how, or I don't think it can be done. I'm like, okay, cool. You won't be like, at the end of the year, when bonuses are getting passed out, you won't be getting no bonus.
What I need you to do is I need you to kill the noise. I need you to embrace the I am. And however you get it done, I need you to get it done. Get up. Are you listening to me? There are 24 hours in a day. Get up. Get up right now from your misery. Get up right now and start climbing. Get up right now and recognize who you are. Get up right now and say enough is enough. Fight for it. Take control of your life. When you get up out of that bed and you start your day, before you walk out that door, make peace with yourself. So what? You slipped. So what? You fell down. Get up right now and climb. For every mountain that you climb, it's gonna get tougher. So I'm telling you to get up. Focus on conquering today. This is the moment. The moment of truth for you to understand that within you, there are great possibilities. I'm talking to the individual that understand that grit is work. Let me tell you something about grit. Grit is when you're hurting so bad. Grit is when you're hurting so bad, but you know you got a job to do. Grit is something that pushes you in a total different direction. How do you get through something? You got to keep climbing. Fall, climb. Slip, climb. You got to climb. You got to know that you are built for something. You wasn't built for nothing. You got to know that if it did not make you, it cannot break you. Pay attention to your drive. Pay attention to your purpose. And just get through the day. Don't dwell on tomorrow. Focus on now. I will make the mistakes. I will fall, but I will get up. I will struggle, but I will learn. I will be what I was meant to be, and no one can take that away. For I am who I am. How will you know who you are inside if you're so afraid of a put down? of a setback, of a rejection, challenges. How will you know who you are if you don't have the abilities, the abilities to rise up, to be able to say, I know who I am. I know I got this. I know I can be better. I know I can come up. You may ask, why me? Why do I have to face so many significant challenges? Why is it that every day that I go to my job, I'm facing challenges? Why is it every day I have to come across someone that wants to test me? Yeah, okay, there's a mountain. Let's see what I can do. Oh man, here we go, here's another one. Let's see what I can do. You can't live this life without climbing to something. You wanna go up, you got to climb up. You wanna get up to the next level, you got to climb up. Obstacles, challenges, life. Oh, and guess what? I forgot to tell you this. Oh, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You gotta work for it. This outcome that you want so bad in your life, this thing that you chasing, whatever that may be, how do you expect to get there? It ain't gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna be handed to you. You gotta keep climbing up that mountain. 
You gotta keep going up. You are going to fall a few times. You are going to slip up. Let me tell you something. Many times in my life, I fell down, I slipped up, I didn't know how I was going to get up, but I got up. I refused to quit on me. I didn't want to go any further, but I said, not today, this is not going to happen to me, because I know I got a job to do. You can do it. I know you can do it. But do you know you can do it? Do you believe in yourself you can do it? Can't do it? Yes, you can. Be who you need to be. But don't you dare be an excuse. Don't quit. Get up. Climb. Today is the day. Today, it's about you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, throughout the rest of your life, you are going to challenge yourself. And you will be challenged. Throughout your life, you are going to have to face some things that you are not prepared for. But you better stay ready for it. You better get yourself together right now. You better understand that your life is not going to be easy because you are living it each and every day and something or someone is coming after you. It doesn't mean that your life is over. That means you are being tested. Don't stop. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep pushing. Don't stop. Keep fighting. Don't stop. Keep working. Let this day be a lesson, not an end. Let this day be the test for the testimony. Let this day be your faith. Let this day be your power. And walk through it. Push through it and know that you got life to live. But if you give up, if you say you're less, then you'll never be more. Say it to yourself, I'm not done yet. I got power. I will rise again and I will push because I know who I am. I am not here to be conquered. I will be the victorious one. I will conquer who I am, who I am. And I must continue to be the best of myself. So live it up. Conquer this day. Be productive. Be powerful. And from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. A little job can give you a big opportunity. Don't tell me you want this stage and you can't stand at that door. Don't tell me, no, no, no. Don't get it twisted, don't get it twisted. Before I ever stood on a stage, I cleaned one at an old Baptist church. When everybody left, I stayed vacuuming when nobody was there. That's how I got the microphone. I didn't get a microphone because I can talk the best. I didn't get a microphone because I can sing the best. I got a microphone because serving kept elevating me everywhere of my life. If you work, if you work at McDonald's, you better work that thing. If they put you on fries, you better get on fries and you better be in there like, yep, it's Friday, yeah, yeah, it's Friday. No, it's not, it's Monday, no, it's Friday, yeah, yeah, it's Friday. And they put you on burgers, you got to get on burgers, you got to be like, yeah, yeah, watch me flip, yeah, watch me, nay, nay, yeah, yeah, watch me flip, flip, yeah, watch me, watch me, yeah, watch me, watch me, and they be like, yo, those guys! And then before you know it, they got you at the register like, yep, do you want a number one? Yep, there's a number one right there. Would you like a number two? There's a number two. Have a great day. Hey, would you like suicide? Have a happy meal. And they're like, oh my God.
And then all of a sudden, you the manager, and you're like, yep, I need you over there. I need you on fries. I need you on burger. I need you at the register, yep. I need you to get that paper, yep. I need you, yep. You take a sick there. And then before you know it, you own six of those things. Why? Because you started with a little, and you worked what God gave you, and you elevated yourself to the top. Stop waiting for the big. God said, I gave you enough. Now use what you got. You might be able to outsing me, but can you outserve me? Can you outserve me? There's so many people who want to lead that can't follow. I, I'm, I'm saying this because everybody wants to get to the top. Everybody wants to talk. Hey man, when, when am I going to talk? When am I going to talk? If you're trying to get on top, I need you to work the level you're on right now. Can, can you clean bathrooms? Can you, can you sing for the kids? Maybe singing for the kids might be the thing that gets the whole world knowing your name. But because you think it's small and insignificant, you won't even do it. You're so thirsty and hungry for something big, not realizing that something little, something small is the one thing that you need to take you to the next level. A news flash, news flash right now that I want to say to everybody who's sitting in the front, everybody who's sitting in the back, you have enough right now to change your life. You have enough right now to flip this world upside down. You have enough. You got enough power. You got enough anointing. You got enough grace. You got enough patience. You got enough gifting to make your money, get out of debt, get yourself together, and change everything about your world. I love single people are so funny to me. They're sitting in Starbucks and they got themselves a book and they they read it to themselves and they got the latte and they're just reading and they're in a quiet space and they're doing good and everything's fine and they're just like this is a good day. I'm just coming out by myself. I'm just gonna have a day by myself and I'm just gonna read and this is good. And then all of a sudden here comes a married couple. They come and walk right on in and then they, they kind of sit near a table near you and they're just sitting there and they're holding hands. You know what I'm saying? And they're looking into each other's eyes and they're just like this. And the single person says, see, see God, you see, I ain't got nothing in my life, you see. I just wish if I just had somebody to hold a hand with, if I, if I could just have somebody just to snuggle with, if I could just sip somebody a latte and they could sip my latte, just, it would be so good. Little does a single person know the married people sitting at the table saying, oh my goodness, that look good. She's all by herself. No, my, if I could just get a day alone, if I, if I could just get my thoughts to myself, oh God, this hand is good. But that looks good. I wish I could read a book sometime. I wish I could take a day by myself and the married people looking at the single person like ah and the single person looking at the married people like ah and the enemy got us all messed up because he wants you not to see that you're blessed right where you are you're whole right where you are you're complete right where you are he wants you to spend your life looking at what you don't have instead of using what you got and I want to talk to the person who spends all your time talking about every problem you have and what's wrong and what failed and what's messed up and how it's not coming together. I need you to do me a favor. Stop talking about your storm and start talking to your storm. That's right. Stop talking about the cancer and start talking to the cancer. Stop talking about the depression and start talking to the depression. And you got to look at your depression and say, depression, you got to get out my life. You got to get out my house. Why? Because this body doesn't belong to you. This mind doesn't belong to you. You got to stop talking about the sickness and you got to start talking to the sickness. And you got to tell the sickness, sickness, you got you to buy three hours you got about three days left in my life you got to start talking to the chaos you got to look your Goliath in the face and say Goliath I'm not backing up I'm not backing down you got to stand flat foot and talk to your storm stop talking about how bad the job is start talking to the job you got to wake up every morning and say this job is great this job is good this job is blessed 
and because I have this job, I'm walking in on assignment. And because I'm in my assignment, I just know that this office is going to be filled with the best stuff that it needs to be filled with. Why? Because you stopped talking about it and you started talking to it. to poverty stop talking about poverty and start talking to poverty and say poverty you are not welcomed in my life poverty you are not welcomed in my home matter of fact I crowned you a landlord right now you are the landlord of your life and you have the right to serve an eviction notice over every tenant in your life that don't belong there I dare you to serve an eviction notice over cancer I dare you to serve an eviction notice over poverty I dare you to serve an eviction notice over lack. You got to tell lack, get out my life. You don't belong here. You don't need to be in this room. Get away from me. Why? Because I am the landlord here and I speak to my storm and I tell my storm, peace be still. You got to say something different. If you want to see something different, you got to say something different. Many of us, we love to, to read motivation. Many of us we love to hear motivation. You can't just hear motivation. You got to speak motivation. You got to say what I'm saying. Don't just hear it and walk away from the video. No, you got to stop and say what I just heard. I got to repeat. And come on, right now, you got to hear what I'm saying and you got to repeat it. I am winning. You're not losing. I'm winning. Come on, I'm overcoming. I'm getting through this. I'm overcoming this challenge. I'm going to get through this mountain. I am going to make it to my destiny. I'm going to see my promise. I'm going to reach my future. I am going to build my legacy. I am going to have these kids. I am going to find that special person. I am going to get this degree. I am going to buy that house. I am going to do it. I'm not just hearing it. I'm going to speak it into my life because my words can change and shift my world. What is preventing most people from moving in the direction that they want to move is a lack of discipline. And no one wants to hear that answer. It's the harshest answer. Yeah. This is hard work, it's every day. When they see that word discipline, it's actually slapped in the face because they know it's true. If you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it, that's the most powerful thing in the world. What are you gonna get without discipline? Are you gonna be in good physical shape without yeah. discipline? Are you gonna be financially successful without discipline? Yeah. Are, you gonna, are you gonna become more intellectually powerful without discipline? You're gonna see me for who I am. Because I need to change who I'm not. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. If you wanna make progress in your life, you gotta have discipline. Discipline equals freedom. You want freedom in your life? You want to achieve what it is you want to achieve? How do you do that? You do it through discipline. You do it through hard work. You do it by knowing what it is you're supposed to do and, and then doing actually it. doing it. <laughs> yeah. You have to face yourself. What am I going to do today to change what I see in this mirror? It starts with yourself, man. Through hard work, you can outwork anybody. Like I'm going to be extreme in my discipline. Somebody asked me that on social media. How do you master discipline? I'm like, you don't. You don't. You keep working at it though. Every day. Yes. It takes power. It takes effort. It takes discipline to break the old you. What gives you confidence not being afraid is overcoming the fear. There's no one in the world that enjoys taking criticism. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. The tougher things you go through, the more confidence you're gonna have, the more confidence you have, the better you're gonna get. But I'm gonna work and try and make myself better. And that's the mentality you have. A lot of us who are afraid of something, we allow our minds to choose the path of least resistance so we go a different route. What I did was what I knew how to do, which was work. You figure it out by going inside yourself. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. That's what I'm gonna do. When I was a little tiny kid, you know, five, six, the only thing I can remember was wanting to be some kind of commando. 
There was no, there was not any question for me. I knew what I wanted to do. I never thought about quitting at any mm, moment in really? time. SEAL Teams is, is going to war. That's what we do. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior, and I would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, getting ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. And, and the fact of the matter is, bullets don't have your name on it. Bullets say to whom it may concern. And the bullet doesn't care who you are. They don't care how much training you've had. They don't care how well prepared you are. And if it's your day, it's your day. And so I think once you get to a point where you recognize and accept the fact that you could, you could die, then you can move past that. That's a really high percentage of people that quit, but there's also people that fail. We have the ability to go in such a space. If you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're gonna die. I worry about missing out on opportunities that I have because I got friends that will never get the chance to execute on opportunities because they didn't come home. And, I, and that's literally what I told my guys was we've, we've crossed a line and there's no, there's no possible way to replace or describe or overcome the amount of just heart-wrenching sadness that you feel when you lose a teammate. I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know what to say. First time, second time, third time. What I did was, and I told my guys, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. The only thing that I know to do is to go back to work. And I do know this, if Mark was here, he would want us to go back to work. And so we're gonna lock and load our weapons and we're gonna go do what we do. That's the reality of, of combat. When you see people in these hard situations, that's when human nature gets revealed. And the more you can understand human nature, the better leader you're gonna be. There's only one type of human being that can't improve as a leader, and that's the, that's the person that lacks humility. Because when someone lacks humility, you can't teach them. A leader has to be balanced. The older I get, the less I know. One of the things that I realize in a leadership position yep. is that the words that you say matter, the actions you take matter. People are listening, people are watching, people are respecting or disrespecting you based on how you carry yourself. Relationships and trust are almost the same word, right? A relationship is something that we've built trust. Now, you can have a bad relationship, and what does that mean? That means there's no trust there. I don't trust you, we have a bad relationship. The way I build trust with people is I give them trust. That's how I build trust. I give it. I give trust to build trust. If I micromanage you and I don't let you make any decisions yourself, well, you're never gonna step up and learn how to lead because you don't get to make any decisions for yourself. Would you rather win or be like? Well, I'm gonna tell you those aren't opposites. The team that likes each other, they win. I'm trying to take the lessons that I was lucky enough to learn and get them to as many people as I can so they don't yeah. have to suffer through the same mistakes that I made. I mean, you're always gonna have regret. You, you know, I don't spend a lot of time with regret. That's good. You know, because there's there's not much that you can do about it. Yeah. So what what the way I look at regret is what did I learn from it? Mm. What, what did I learn from whatever thing I'm looking at that I know I could have done a better job, could have done different? There's a million things like that, but I don't sit there and think about them all day long. What I think is like, hey, here's the lessons that I learned from them. I won't make those mistakes again and move forward. Every single day for me, it starts at you know ground zero. I've got to I've got to 
go forward with an open mind, with a humble mind, looking at the world. When somebody gives you feedback, you listen to it. Number one, you gotta be humble. And if you're not humble, you're not looking for feedback and you're not listening to it. No feedback, no improvement. Feedback is, is built upon being humble. Everything that I look at, I try and look at from a humble perspective. If, and if you don't do that, it's gonna mm. be a problem. Oh, yeah. If I'm looking down the sights of my weapon and I'm shooting, my world is this big. The minute that I stop shooting, point my weapon at high port, take a step back and actually look around, I can see infinitely more. Eventually you gotta start doing it. As a leader, you should be listening 98% of the time and talking 2% of the time. Mm -hmm.